E-Grid is a detailed data pool of the environmental characteristics of almost all of the electric power generated in the United States. The site helps to organize information associated with electricity generation by power plant or land region for the years 2004 and 2005. The site is easy to navigate. Begin by clicking on the Data tab or click here to get started button. The first step in organizing relevant information is setting the appropriate parameters. Select the appropriate year and then choose the aggregation level. The data can be aggregated by nation, state, NERC region, EGRID subregion, power control area, power plant, electric generating company, or parent company. NERC, or the North American Reliability Corporation, refers to the 10 regions of the U.S. as seen in this picture. EGRID refers to 26 subregions of the U.S. as seen here. PCAs or power control area refers to the power plants which are controlled by and feed into a single coordinated power system. A PCA functions like a mini grid within the national grid. The difference between operator based and owner based for electric generating company and parent company aggregation stems from the fact that operator based entities are aggregated from the plant's operators while owner based entities are aggregated from the plant's owners. Each plant has one operator, but each plant has one or more owners, any of which may be different than the operator. After choosing an aggregation level, choose one or many of the records listed, and then choose View Data. The data presented varies depending upon the chosen aggregation level. If the data is aggregated by land region, then eGrid generates regional data including generating capacity, net generation and heat input along with the region's emissions profile, generation resource mix, and import-export data. If the data is aggregated by power plant, further information regarding the specific power plant is generated including characteristics, ownership, boilers, and generators. The emissions profile is consistently generated for all aggregation levels and it quantifies the total emissions of seven pollutants. The generation resource mix defines the various fuels used to generate power and the total megawatt hours generated by each fuel. The user can export all data to Excel or similar programs by clicking on the Export Data button. Under the Greenhouse Gas Emissions Factor tab, the user will find an overview table of the various eGrid regions and their subsequent emissions rates. Under the Reports tab, similar but more detailed reports can be downloaded for various years and regions. All of the data from this site can be used for calculations including estimation of carbon footprints. To generate a carbon footprint estimate of a firm located relatively homogeneously across the nation, for example Walmart or Starbucks, the nation's average emission rates may be utilized. In this example, in 2005, if 2,000 shops are scattered around the United States, each using an average of 10,200 kilowatt hours per month, what is an estimate of their total annual emissions due to electricity consumption? In this situation, if we were to individually sum the emissions of each store and then divide by the number of stores, the number would be so remarkably close to the national average that it is safe to use it in this estimate. According to Eager, the national statistics are as follows. This can be found from the website like so. To facilitate calculations, we can export the data to a spreadsheet simply by copying and pasting. The next step in solving this problem is to convert the 10,200 kilowatt hours per month to megawatt hours per month and gigawatt hours per month. 10,200 kilowatt hours per month equals 10.2 megawatt hours per month equals 0 0.0102 gigawatt hours per month which are the units used by eGrid. Next, we must convert to annual consumption for consistency, which is simply done by multiplying these numbers by 12 to get these numbers. The next step is to multiply consumption by the emission rate for each pollutant. That is, we simply multiply this number by this number to get the store output emissions, which can be done in Excel.
and you must do this for every pollutant. Note that we will only be considering the output emission rates, being that we only aim for an estimate. Of the six greenhouse gases traditionally included in a footprint, calculation, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, sulfur hexafluoride, and two groups of gases, hydrofluorocarbons and perfluorocarbons, we will only be using the three provided in the eGrid profile, carbon, methane, and nitrous oxide, which is safe being that we are only estimating. To calculate the annual carbon footprint, we must convert the pollutant gases into CO2 equivalents using their 100-year global warming potentials as recommended by the IPCC. The global warming potential potentials are listed here, and we find the CO2 equivalent simply by multiplying the GWP by the stored output emissions to get the CO2 equivalent output, which can be done in Excel. So the total CO2 equivalent emitted by one store is the sum of these three numbers, being 163,564 pounds. Being that there are 2,000 stores, the total footprint of the company is this number multiplied by 2,000, or 148,516 metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year. Which parameters to use in order to generate a carbon footprint estimate of a firm with multiple locations depends on the level of accuracy desired in the estimate and the relative concentration of the sites. For example, one could use a NERC or EGRID subregion if, for the most part, all of the sites are located within these regions, or one could be more specific by using the PCA, power plant, or electric generating company parameters. In this example, the law offices of Snail and Wilbur would like to estimate their carbon footprint. There are offices in Denver, Las Vegas, Orange County, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Tucson, Reno, and Salt Lake City. Being that all of these firms lie in the NERC subregion WECC, Western Electricity Coordinating Council, we can generate an estimate using the data from WECC. We can find this information on the eGrid website like so. Again, we can simply copy and paste this into an Excel spreadsheet to make our calculations easier. Now, if the annual consumption for each site is as follows, we must do as in the first example and convert our kilowatt hours per month to megawatt hours per year and gigawatt hours per year, being that these are the units used in eGrid. We can then multiply the consumption by the emission rate for each pollutant in each site as shown here, which can be done in Excel. Here I have limited the pollutants to the three we will use in our carbon footprint calculation. And this must be done for each site and each pollutant. Now, to find the CO2 equivalent, as in the last example, we must multiply by the global warming potential to get the firm total. As can be seen, the firm's total CO2 equivalent for the year is 2,595,849 pounds. If the Denver firm wished to calculate their emissions specifically, then they would likely use the appropriate PCA, which in this case is the Public Service Company of Colorado. The data pertaining to Denver now looks as follows, and this can be found on the eGrid website, like so. This information can again be copy and pasted into our Excel spreadsheet. Notice the stark difference between the output, output emission rates calculated by the PCA and the output emissions rates calculated in our more general search. It is almost double.
So using the PCA parameters, the Denver firm emissions are as follows. Notice that this number is almost double our original estimate. It can be noted that in most carbon footprint estimates, only the annual CO2 emissions are included in the calculation, being that they are the largest contributor. And this concludes our example.